This is my work called Albion, and it's a laser scan of the major oak, which is a very old oak tree in Sherwood Forest in England, which is where I'm from, and it's apparently the tree where Robin Hood used to hide with his merry men. Because of its mythological significance as Robin Hood's hiding tree, it's been kept alive with these metal rods and the chains inside of it holding it up. And it's a very sad scene. And I made this work at the time of the European referendum in England. This is a work that I made based on the Armenian Georgian film director, Sergei Parajanov. Parajanov is like the Eastern Fellini. He takes a lot of elements from the normal world and he gives them some kind of spiritual quality. So I've taken lots of different films myself that I shot in Armenia, little clips from YouTube, and I've represented them inside these old doors and windows, the kind of architecture that you see occurring in his films. So the work for me was kind of about that thing of, of what we do with nature. Symbolically, we, we, we attach certain things to it to elevate it from its original status. When I was a child, we never had a TV at home uh, for certain reasons, because my parents were quite religious. So the, the TV and the animated image has always had uh, a kind of an illicit allure to it. It's always been very attractive to me. And this is a recreation of a bird in an air pump. It was made famous in a painting by Joseph Wright of Derby, and it's an experiment to see if life, in this, in this instance a canary, can exist inside a vacuum, or whether it needs oxygen to breathe. In this room we have some sculptures of flowers and some photographic works of butterflies. So I've made, remade these flowers with little bits of human disease on them to make them more animal again, to make them look like the, the breeding machines that they are desperately trying to survive. And I was referencing Baudelaire's Fleur de Mal and J.K. Heisman's Against Nature that deal with a similar subject matter. This is a work called the Corporal Audit, and it's made through the process of a lithophane, which is like an old, original, I think, Chinese technique. You would have like a little cup, and you drink the tea, and on the bottom, this porcelain cup would have different thickness and thinness of material. And depending on the light traveling through the thickness and thinness of the material, you would have this image. The sculpture itself is Christ laid out with linen over him. So there's a certain eroticism in that original image. You can just about see him through the, the creases of the linen. This is a work which is a three-dimensional zoetrope based on the Victorian optical toy, like a cylinder with slots in it which rotates. With this, we have an actual three-dimensional figures and stroboscopes which are synchronized with it so you get the illusion of animations in three dimensions. The scene I've got here is some kind of carnivalesque orgy, this, this party where people are indulging, eating, drinking, fighting. And it's a little bit based on the uh, uh, the quote from the Bible, eat, drink and be merry for tomorrow you die. These people are enjoying themselves but there's a sense of desperation because of the repetition of this rotation of the, of the chandelier. So they're having a party but it's like the, the last desperate moments of that party. These works are called Black Mirror Works. They're paintings that I've taken from art historical museums, and I've just breathed a little bit of light into them. So I've taken that moment when somebody's there modeling for a painting, they're about to be transformed from being just a humble human being that's breathing and twitching into this depiction, in this case, of David and Goliath from the Bible. So they become iconic and the painting itself in this case which is Caravaggio itself becomes iconic so there's a transformation happening from the real world into something that's, that's that, that goes to another realm its, its status is changed as it's, as it's immortalized and the images on the wall here are 
my work's last meal on death row. They're based on 17th century still life painting, Spanish painting, a lot was influential to me. And they're depictions of the last meals that prisoners requested on death row before they're executed. In this sense, they become like surrogate portraits of these prisoners that were executed on death row. This is another work based on a very famous theme in art history, the massacre of the innocents, been painted many times, Rubens most famously. And it was also a very popular medieval play. Uh, they would have pigs' bladders full of blood, which they would put inside the costumes, and then they would stab them on stage, and several rows of the audience would be soaked in this blood. And the people loved this theater of, of violence that was happening. And it's just something that's, that's fed into everything else that comes after it, from gladiatorial combat to animated violent cartoons, video games, etc. It's, it's, it's just all kinds of different subject matter, that, uh, uh, different means that the subject matter emerges in.